blue skies, famous silverware and scorching temperatures on day two of the All Britain Championships, which was a day of two halves. In the morning, secondary schools performed to a very high standard in the searing heat. And then in the afternoon, more than 500 younger children took part in a massive Go Games event for under eights and under tens. First, the school's competition, where one team blew everyone else away. St Paul's from Abbeywood in London played a slick passing game and showed the kind of ruthless finishing that won them a Fela Division 2 title in Ireland last month. Um, it's mostly like our teachers. Without our teachers, we wouldn't be able to do it. Like The motivation from our teachers and like the work we put in on Friday nights and uh, Tuesdays and Wednesdays as well, and sometimes on Mondays as well, yeah. So there's hard work, but the skills are also really, really good. Yeah, um, I think it's our, our teachers have a lot of experience as well, because I think some of them have won Oil Islands as well. So they know what it's like to play in Oil Islands and like the, the level it's at. And like they can, they know as well like all these techniques that they used with coaches who taught them, and like they kind of want to put it on, put it on us as well. It starts in the primary school, so you know when these boys are year five, six, they come to us in the summer. We have a competition and uh, a lot of coaching goes in the primary schools. So with people like Martin McGrath, Michael Maher working hard with the kids, um, and then when they come to us when they're ready for St Paul's for the secondary school. They've all they've done the hard work, so it's just a matter of coaching them then, the finer tuning of the game, um, tactics and all the rest. Uh, and, and they buy into it. And, you know, the bottom line is they're good sportsmen, but they're good learners as well, so they pick things up quickly. Um, and, you know, as we said earlier, in the, the team talk at the end, the game is alien to them when they start off, but it does become, um, almost for some of them, a first sport, um, so much as the practice they put in the time they give it, so it all pays off on a day like this, you know, you get get it all together. And Mickey Hart is aware of this team, he's met them? Yeah, he's been over to the school twice, um, he was heavily involved with us in uh, 2010, um, so he's, he's been a big, big interest in ours and we're delighted to have the support from people like Mickey, you know, really wanting to see guys, as I say, of all backgrounds and just giving them the chance to play and enjoy Gaelic games, and I think that's where the, the association should be looking to go. Um, you know, it was Irish people all, all over London and it's good that they're supporting it, but I really do think um, the more people outside of Ireland get involved, the more promotion the game will get and, and it'll be good for the game. The afternoon saw an invasion of the Chirconnell Gales venue by young children and their families. No trophies on offer this time, but an amazing sight and an indication of the healthy state of Gaelic games in Britain. This afternoon with 52 teams from all across Britain, over 500 kids playing I think something like 150 games, something like that um, and it's from half three to half seven so it's four hours, nine pitches going flat out, just no break, just keep going, keep playing that playing matches. It's unbelievable and it's grown so much, this is the sixth ABC, we had um, I think it was six or seven hundred kids the first year and we're going to have up and around two and a half thousand this, this year so it's, it's been incredible, the journey. What does it say about the state of Gaelic Games at grassroots level and at youth level and the potential of it? Thriving, absolutely thriving. I mean, you, you can see yourself here today, um, the amount of kids that are here, how much they enjoy it, how much they care about Gaelic games, you know, it's, it's incredible when you think about it, you know. Um, so it's absolutely thriving, the potential is massive. The issue that we encounter time and time again is getting the kids to a certain level, so when we get to 14, 16, 18, you know, there, there is a bit of a drop off and, and kids don't quite always follow through. So if we can, if we can bridge the gap from under 14 to adult level, I think I think you'll see you'll see some really talented players coming out of Britain in the next five to ten years, you know.